I started my lifting journey at 16. Now back then, I didn't like the look of my body. I was weighing in at 155 pounds and I wanted to look bigger, better, sexier. So I decided to go to the gym. Now, after the first few months of going to the gym, I actually started noticing changes in my body and the way I looked started looking bigger and sexier and I became so addicted to that. Now, two years later, I'm weighing in at 205 pounds. So a 50 pound increase in two years. That's absolutely insane. And if I could go back and like talk to my 16 year old self, to my younger self, this video is exactly what I would show him. Because if he followed all the tips that I'm gonna give you, I probably would have made those gains in about a year. I'm gonna share with you only the practical tips you need to know that you can start using like in your next workout. Let's talk about the workout tips. Now, the first thing you need to do is actually find a workout plan that you can stick to. Now, if you don't wanna overcomplicate this, just go on the third link in the description. It's basically my workout plan. But if you wanna optimize your gains, what I recommend you doing is personalizing a certain workout plan. You can do a push pull leg, gym bro split, or a split like I have, and personalize it to your needs. I'm gonna give you an example. I have a chest and tricep, back and bicep, shoulders and traps, and leg workout split, so basically a four day split. And when I hit chest and tricep, I actually start with tricep because my arms, since I'm tall and lengthy, are my weak point. You want that workout plan to fit in a week. So I have a four day split. So basically what I like doing is adding three rest days in that week. I basically add them whenever I want, but I always repeat the same week. For the exercise selection, basically what you're gonna wanna do is find three compound movement that you can actually hit every single week. So let's say for your back, I would do rows. For your, my chest, I would do bench press. And for my legs, I would do squats. So every single week, I would actually hit at least once rows, at least once bench press, and at least once squats, basically. And for the other exercises, what I recommend doing is basically just choosing which one you prefer. Now, if you can, try to find one where your muscle is in a stretch position. I'm gonna give you an example. Instead of lying leg curls, actually do seated leg curls because in seated position, your hamstring is actually more stretched. Instead of always doing some tricep push down, why not add some tricep extension where your tricep is in a more stretched position. Also works with bicep. Basically, if you're doing bicep, like cable curls, lean forward a little bit. If you're doing some seated leg extension, lean backward, get the gist of it. What you also wanna do is train close to failure and sprinkle a little bit of failure here and there. Basically, what I like doing is like, let's say I'm doing three sets per exercises. On the first two sets, I would get close to failure, so maybe one rep in reserve. And on the last set, I would go like to failure and push as much as I can past failure. Also, utilize the stretch part of the movement. Now, I already said that you should actually like choose your exercise knowing that in a more stretch position, you're actually gonna get more gains. Well, basically what you can also do is do long stretch partials. So basically, let's say I'm doing some bench press. You don't wanna skip the first half of the movement because in the first half of the movement, is where you actually get the most amount of gains because that's when your chest is stretched to the maximum. So let's say you see someone doing some bench press and not hitting their chest with the bar. Well, they're actually losing gains. Let's say they're only doing this and they're not going all the way over here. They're actually losing gains. So make sure you're not doing this. What you can also do, which doesn't really work with bench press, but let's say you're doing some, I don't know, barbell curls. Well, with barbell curls, you do the full range of motion. And when you cannot do the full range of motion anymore, you simply do the bottom half of the rep as much as you can. And that's when the bicep is mostly stretched, right? So you're gonna gain more gains. And I mean, there's this study that compared people doing only the bottom half of a bicep curl 
compared to doing only the top half and the ones who only did the bottom half gain over twice more growth. So you need to make sure you're not skipping that part because that's actually going to maximize your gains. On top of that, you want to focus on just getting the best pump possible. So if you don't want to overcomplicate all of this and think about RP or rep in reserve, like I mentioned in like the third tip, well, what you can actually do is only focus on the pump. And I did that for like quite a, like a while. Like I was only thinking about like getting the juiciest pump so I would like look good like right away. And trading like that actually works. So you can follow all the tips I gave you and focus on getting the pump. That's the best way to optimize your growth. Now let's get on with the eating tips. The first thing you need to figure out is if you should bulk, cut, or main gain. Now, I'm gonna do this extremely simple with you. If you're a skinny guy, you need to bulk, simple. If you're skinny fat, lean bulk. So bulk, but try to put on as least amount of mass as possible and try to make sure that that mass you're putting on is only muscle. I'm gonna make a guide on that. If you're a skinny fat fat, I recommend main gaining. If you're fat, main gain because you don't actually want to cut, especially when you're a teenager and you're fat. Try to think as if you were transforming that fat into muscle because it has been shown that when you cut and you're a teenager can actually like fuck up your hormones and stunt your growth and you don't want that. The only exception is if you're obese, then I'd recommend a cut. Now the second thing you want to do is find your main gain calorie intake. Now you can go on this website where you basically like fill in your height, you fill in your weight, your activity level, and it's actually going to give you a calorie intake to main gain. Now with that main gain calorie intake, if you want to bulk, you basically want to add around 600 calorie on top of that. So a 600 calorie surplus. If you want to lean bulk, a 300 calorie surplus. If you want to main gain, zero calorie surplus. If you want to cut, 300 calorie deficit basically. Now to know if you're eating the right amount of calorie, at first I think it's important to actually track your calories, but let's say you did that and you didn't really like it just like I did. Well, you can kind of guess the amount of calorie you're eating and make sure you're either losing or gaining weight by tracking your weight daily. That's something that you must do, track your weight daily. First thing I do in the morning when I'm fasted, when I'm at my lightest, I weight myself. And I do that every single day, so it's kind of constant, right? And that's the only way you're gonna know if you're gonna hit your goal or not. Now, if you need more help, I've got this one-to-one -one coaching program where we basically hop on calls, stuff like that. It's actually the first thing in the description. And if you wanna see me and my little bros just next door work out, we actually got this second channel where we post like almost all of our workouts together. And it's honestly amazing, filled with testosterone and motivation. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was valuable to you. And I'll see you in the next one.